Um, hello, everyone. So uh, my name is Masa Tanaka, and um, I'm a founder and uh, kind of CEO of uh, Asia Corporation, which is a company behind uh, two products called Monaka and Onsen UI. Um, today, I would like to talk briefly about what is Web Components, and that's the technology which we've been working on for more than maybe four years, and also like um, you know the the benefit of using Web Components and how we're of construct using web components to create our UI framework. So first of all, uh, just a um, brief summary of what is web components. So web components, I think uh, most of you already have heard of this term for more than maybe five years now. Um, it's, it's been a pretty good, um, it's a very like a long term. Uh, there is a long history around web components, but uh, they're actually, um, composed of four big elements into web components. One is what is called HTML templates, which uh, we can define uh, the component in a different HTML um, and making it reusable from the main pages, from the PRM pages. And also there is a, one of the web components is called custom elements, which we can allow uh, we, we can define our custom tags, um, which wraps all the JavaScript and uh, HTML5 in there um, to, to create uh, you know, the, the actual components. So this is mostly you know, uh, what we consider as web components. And then there is a shadow DOM, uh, which like, has a strict uh, separation between the parent DOM and the, and the component DOM, which we can encapsulate all the CSS and HTML5 definitions so that we can, use, uh, we can reuse the components without getting a conflict from other CSS definitions. And then, last of all, uh, there is a HTML5 HTML imports, which we can import HTML, uh, and it's it's more like a ES module, but uh, it's more for the DOM uh, structure to import the specific component. So those four blocks are composed of web components, and the benefit of web components is that um, this is a this is a web standard technology which does not rely anything onto the JavaScript, onto the uh, framework like uh, Angular 2 or React. So this is a pure, like a very simple example of a web component uh, application. Um, this is a star component, which I created using, um, using um, the custom elements and HTML5 import, HTML import and also uh, Shadow DOM. So, just briefly mentioning how it is composed. So this star, if I inspect this thing, you will notice that it's a, uh, it's too small. It's a, uh, it's called favorite star. So this is a custom element. So we define a component called custom favorite star. And inside here, maybe you 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 see there is a shadow root, which is what we are using the shadow DOM for this. And by doing so, um, we can create our custom elements called favorite star. So how it, it is loaded is that we are using HTML import, which is uh, referred in this tag uh, called uh, link tag using rel equals import. And we can import the HTML into the, into, into the parent DOM. Um, and with, within this definition, uh, this this little snippet here actually is the is actual definition of this star component. Uh, this looks a little bit long, but actually, if I describe briefly, it is not that difficult, actually. So inside the tem within the template, there is a style tag. So in this style tag, we define all the CSS definitions. And by also combining with Shadow DOM, this CSS is totally isolated from the parent DOM. So so whatever uh, we, we can configure the styles here, it won't af affect any other spam tags because this is, this is using the, you know, the spam tag which should be reflected to all the other spam components if this, is shadow, if this is not a shadow DOM, but because thanks to shadow DOM, uh, we can only uh, style this spam tag only for this favorite star component. And here's a spam tag uh, for the actual star. And and inside there, there's a script tag, which we can, we can, we can define uh, how these components behave in a JavaScript. 
so, so we are using uh, plain uh, um, ECMAScript 6 for writing these definitions. It's a, it's a pretty, uh, pretty uh, like straightforward approach because we just extend HTML element to create a favorite star element. And then we define some you know, constructors, we, we, we do some bootstrapping, and also we, we have some, like there are some typical callbacks like connected callback or disconnected callback, which is called when we put the component or maybe when we remove the components. Or there's a, one more important callback called attribute changed for callback, which is called when, when, the, when the DOM uh, has changed the, uh, the attributes within this component. And of course, we can, we can um, define additional methods into there. And finally, and the most importantly, uh, we use this uh, custom elements object in order to inject this custom element into the browser. So, this, so by, by doing so, we can create our own custom elements, which is totally um, like, uh, compilant to HTML standard. And, but actually, uh, there aren't so many, like, uh, good um, you know, use cases of custom elements or maybe web components in general. Uh, and I think that because of this uh, pros and cons. So I'm going to briefly describe what is the good thing about it and what is not a good thing about this. So for the pros, uh, I will say this is very, very simple. Um, well, this has been long, longly discussed in a web browser team uh, in like Google or Safari. Uh, so, so this is this is uh, totally like a simple standard technology for, for browsers. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, maybe if you're familiar with, um, with like virtual DOM frameworks, uh, so say like React or, or maybe Vue.js, uh, they pretty much do something similar, but they're more, ex more enhanced than this uh, in terms of like we can put like methods into the props uh, but for the custom elements, this is only for, uh, for, for strings that we can put as attributes. Well, but there is actually a workaround that like Onsen UI is doing is that we parse the, the string attributes and convert it to a JavaScript function and work. So that, that's possible, but um, still, uh, the, 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 the specification itself is pretty simple. And of course, uh, the, the biggest pro is that this is uh, supported by the browser natively, um, which means we can expect very good performance in terms of the interpretation and also the, 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 the isolation of the CSS and other, uh, other JavaScript performances. But on the other hand, as, as, you know, as likely, um, it's still uh, in some browsers, it's under development. And, but I hope they will be coming and catching up pretty soon. And this is the current status of how these web components are, uh, are supported in the browsers. Uh, luckily, uh, there are polyfills. Uh, so actually, um, you can use those custom elements and shadow DOMs, even though the browser doesn't support natively. And also, um, also uh, what is a big thing for Safari is that from iOS 10.3, all the custom elements and shadow DOM have been supported natively, which means now maybe it's time for, for, for the developers to gradually switch, switch into custom elements uh, to fully take advantage of this native support, which means higher performance. And one more thing uh, worth mentioning is the, is the, is the, uh, is the, is a connection between Polymer project and web components. Uh, previously, back in the, like two or three years ago, uh, web components are mostly uh, like, um, attached to Polymer project. It's, all, it's because Polymer, Polymer project, uh, which is driven by Google, have created, uh, have been maintaining, maintaining the polyfills for custom component, uh, for custom elements and shadow DOMs for web components. But, um, but, idea, but, but uh, in, pra in practice, uh, they are totally different projects. So Polymer is also a project that, that sits on top of web component standard. It is only because Polymer provides the polyfills, which is very good uh, to, to simulate uh, custom elements and shadow DOMs uh, onto the browsers. Uh, many developers feel that Polymer is kind of 
web components, but actually it is a little bit different. Polymer is a project to provide like material design and also the way to cre create the uh, and, and create the component um, oriented framework uh, for for the web applications. So, so that's why there are some other uh, frameworks that also use these web components. And by saying so, uh, Onsen UI, which we've been doing, is also uh, one of the frameworks that is heavily using these web components in order to create um, all the UI components for mobile applications. So let's go ahead to uh, Onsen UI. Um, so this is the UI library to create hybrid and, of course, you know, progressive web apps because they're pretty much similar in a sense of user interface. So the features, uh, it's a very super simple API thanks to web components. Uh, they're, they're all, all, they're, uh, all of them are just tags, so you can just put all the tags into your HTML and it just works. And it's framework agnostic because it's web components again, uh, which means uh, all the JavaScript frameworks will sit on top of our Onsen UI components because we are, we're more sticking into the uh, native custom comp, uh, native you know, browser implementations, which means uh, this is very future-proof because uh, it's also like, uh, you know, we are taking leverage of uh, web components. We don't really um, include any of the like JavaScript uh, framework source code. Uh, so it's, it's just a, a simple, like, so, so all the implementations are just simple HTML5 and JavaScript. So, but still, it's, a, it's, it's, yet, it's very powerful because we're using custom elements, which means we can inject all the JavaScript and CSS into the components. So for UI components, well, I will, I'm going to demonstrate a little bit uh, in a sink, kitchen sink, but um, so it's pretty simple. Uh, we have, we are defining many tags, uh, as I mentioned former, uh, formally. So ons input, ons switch, ons toast. So there are so many ons objects, which represents all, the, all those UIs for mobile applications. We also have like ons navigator for navigator component. We also have like splitter, ons splitter for splitter, um, ons I don't know, toolbar, ons page. Um, so literally all the mobile interfaces are defined using our custom elements. So this is a kitchen sink application. Um, and what, to, what, what you will notice is that those two um, user interface are tot looks totally different, but actually uh, this will be this is automatically styled based on the operating system. So when you run an application, uh, you will get the actual like uh, iOS or material design based on the running platform. Um, so so for instance, uh, well this is uh, and we we also change the animation. So so on the left hand side, this is the iOS style sliding bar. And on the, on the right-hand side, this is a material design sliding menu, uh, which the animation is totally different. And also like uh, page animations. Uh, so here is the animation. So you, you see the top bar uh, placed in a different place because of the automatic styling. Uh, for like, uh, so this is the iOS slide, uh, which has a ESO effect as what uh, Tid said. And also this is a material design slide. And we have the same variants for all the other animations as well. Um, we have, we have uh, many components for forms as well. Um, and you see, like, uh, well, here's the, like, uh, like an input component, which we have uh, different styles. Uh, for material design, we have a floating like, label for, for those uh, material components because that's a standard for Android. So we try to keep us as exactly the same as native uh, requirement for, for delivering those iOS and Android components. Of course, you can mix and match together. Like you can, you can of course, use those material floating menu, uh, floating label input for, uh, within the iOS application. That's, also, uh, that's totally um, acceptable. I mean, we, we just, you just change the modifier pro property uh, and everything will switch completely. But, um, but in general, uh, it's better to uh, keep the same style for, for each framework. Um, and, and for the more complex examples, like this is an infinite scroll, uh, which you, you will get, um, like 
infinite number of scrolls without like uh, you know uh, getting performance bottleneck uh, thanks to the to the DOM manipulations, and also this is a different example like loading sample of infinite scroll. So we have pretty much uh, many use cases of uh, mobile applications to get started right away. And on top of this, uh, so until now, uh, I'm talking about custom elements, but, um, but I, I also mentioned earlier uh, application frameworks like Angular 2 or React or maybe Vue.js are providing something on top of those DOM in order to, like, uh, to, to provide users more easier interface to manipulate objects. And so that's why Onsen UI also provides bindings for each framework. So for instance, on the left, left top side, it's a plain JavaScript API. Uh, you, uh, just you can use in a custom elements, which we, say, which we call Onsen UI core. And on the right-hand side, uh, this is AngularJS. We also support Angular 2. But for AngularJS, you will see uh, there, is a, uh, there is a dollar scope to, to manipulate those components. And of course, for Vue, Vue and React, it's uh, more like a um, um, virtual DOM. So you can use uh, all the props, like is cancelable or on, or on cancel. And you can just change the state. So you can, you can combine with Vuex or maybe uh, Redux in order to do the state management. Um, but uh, but essentially, all the components are derived from the custom elements, also UI core, which means all the behaviors, you know, all the CSS, all the practices that you learn uh, while developing for a framework, you can, you can easily transfer your, your knowledge and your skill and your gotchas into the different framework. So, so again, the structure of Onsen UI is somewhat very unique because we, we have CSS components, which is a component just for CSS, and you can just freely use it just to, to, to create some like, prototypes uh, which don't require any JavaScript. Or, and on top of the CSS components, we have web components co composed of custom elements. And then on top of web components, we have framework bindings for Angular 2 and React and Vue.js. And those three frameworks are what we, uh, we are supporting uh, officially as in a team. And, and there's so, some, other, uh, framework, uh, some other bindings that is driven by communities, like uh, the, the binding for Aurelia and the binding for Ember and binding for, uh, for what is it called? Sorry, uh, Media. Uh, so there, there are a couple of other bindings that um, that's, that's mostly uh, can be used with a custom element uh, for, for those frameworks. But in general, because it is custom elements, you can just plug these components into whatever the framework you like. Uh, of course, it works perfectly with like Backbone or, or jQuery, but um, if, if there is any framework in the future which looks appealing, we, we, can, we can just support those features by just pr providing the differentiation between the custom elements and the unique features that the framework provides. And one more thing I would like to highlight for this Onsen UI is that we, we provide very good interactive tutorial. Um, I'm, I just try, I, I just wanted to uh, briefly describe how, how easy it is. So this is, uh, you, you, can, you can come to this page, place from um, our Onsen UI website. It's just as easy as just learning uh, how, how to get started with those components. You can just click on, like, for, for instance, if you want to get started with Vue.js, you, you can click on, like, a, you know, the, the menu here to understand uh, how, how those uh, components are made. And you can just, you know, toggle the view and see how they're actually running. And also, you can, you can just, you know, like type in here and just click run again to, to reflect the changes so that it's, it's more like a sandbox application that you can just try and see how Onsen UI works in each component. So if you're, if you're interested in learning Onsen UI, I recommend you just coming to this interactive tutorial, tutorial and just follow the procedure guides here to understand how, how you can make use of, make use of those components. Okay. Uh, so back in my slide. Okay. okay, so from here, I would like to uh, briefly describe about the tooling pace. Uh, so until now, I was talking about Onsen UI and custom elements, but uh, the, the difficulty is not only the UI framework, but also you know how to 
develop mobile applications, especially um, for, 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 for us as a Cordova you know, uh, developer, uh, providing, you know, creating, developing applications for our end users in Japan, uh, they demand so many features. They, they're, they're very like, picky about the performance, but not, not only performance, but also the overall quality. Uh, so, so we need to, so we ended up creating something called Monica in order to like, efficiently and also professionally create Cordova applications. So Monica is an integrated development platform for developing Cordova applications. It's, um, the, the, the huge advantage is that it's, it's run on top of cloud. Uh, we provide all the you know, built environment uh, so that the user can just use the client PC to develop for Cordova applications. Uh, and also, it is framework agnostic, uh, which means um, it's, 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 it's just a, like an editor and a, and the build engine and also the CI and you know backend services running on cloud, which means you know you can literally use any any sort of like UI framework or not only about onsen UI but also like framework seven and others um, to to develop mobile applications. And we provide not only online browser-based ID but also local tools to synchronize between the cloud and the local environment. <laughs> So one of the advantage of using Monica is uh, there is a live sync debugger. Uh, you can just free, you know, download freely from App Store and Google Play and just connect to the Monica Cloud ID and you can just get the basic and advanced debugging capable uh, just uh, in, a, in, a, in, a very, you know, in a very quick way. So you don't need to have any hassle uh, setting up your environment. We also provide uh, what we call Monica CI, which is a, a continuous integration deployment platform, which uh, you, can, you can just you know, hook to your GitHub or Bitbucket, and whenever uh, you push to the project, uh, to, to that repository, we will catch the changes and automatically like, build, uh, run the test, and also deploy to Hockey App and deploy Git. And also, uh, even more, um, we, we also have the iOS deployment feature to App Store, so, uh, so it, it will be automatically done uh, by using the continuous integration. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty quickly um, get, the, get it done to deploy to the uh, App Stores. And also, we provide backend as a service, like push notifications uh, or user management or cloud-based database. So almost everything that is required to create Cordova applications will be packed into this cloud. And well, I, I need to mention this. Uh, not everything is free, but at least the, the, the things I mentioned for mentioned, like a continuous integration, debugger, browser ID, uh, push notifications, uh, users collections, those are provided for free, but uh, it's just limited to three projects. So that's the limitation we provide. But if you, but if you're try like, you know, evaluating Monica and wanting to go to the commercial plan, we, we provide uh, more allowance to the projects. And we also provide something like enterprise features, like uh, app encryption service or the remote uh, in-app update feature, or, or, or maybe like uh, awesome technical support, uh, maybe in Japanese or maybe in English. It depends on the people, but um, we are providing those kind of commercial plans. So, so uh, from here, I, I guess I have a little bit more time, so I'm going to do a quick demo of what is uh, how, how we can make applications using Monica CLI and Onsen UI. So. Actually, I want to increase the resolution if that's possible. Killed. See. Hmm. Looks like it doesn't display. Okay, I'll go back to the full full HD. Did I do something bad? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, I'll try that. Maybe lesson learned. I should never change the resolution here. <laughs> okay, here it is. Okay, cool. Okay, so, um, okay. Uh, let's go with this. 
So this is a terminal um, with my favorite onsen sign. Well, anyways, uh, onsen UI, uh, you, know, you know, the if, if you see carefully the emoji, there is a emoji like this. Uh, you, know, you know the emoji is coming from Japan, right? Uh, well, may, maybe some of you know at least. Uh, and this is onsen, which refers to a hot spring in Japanese. Hot spring, you know, spa, SPA, single page applications. That's how we named onsen UI. So it's a simple single page application toolkit. Uh, that's the uh, that's, uh, naming behind onsen UI. So, so luckily, there is an emoji for onsen, so I'm using this for my terminal. And then, so there is a Monica command. Um, what I can do is I can just uh, create a project over here. Well, first of all, yeah, okay. Monica create, hello world. So because I mentioned uh, Monica is framework agnostic, um, you can choose uh, whatever is framework, um, not only Onsen UI, but other frameworks as well. Um, for now, I will pick uh, Onsen UI with view. So let, let me go with uh, navigation. Uh, it, it may take maybe a couple of seconds, maybe 10 or 20 seconds in order to like completely uh, fetch the repo from the GitHub. But, um, please be patient. So once this is done, maybe, come on, okay, here it is, okay, installed, and I just go to hello world. So it's, it's just a standard Cordova, um, like a directory structure with some additional uh, directory called dot Monica. Uh, so this is a place where I store, you know, we store project information. But actually, there's nothing really important here. But um, because you know, Monica provides all the configuration parameters, like you know, what Cordova version to build or what kind of uh, plugin to support, we, you, you can define in JSON format. Um, I'm going to open the editor, uh, Visual Studio Code. But before tweaking something, uh, some pages, I just want to run this application using Monica preview command. So. This, uh, so it depends on the framework which you choose. If you choose like React or Vue 2 or uh, Angular 2, Webpack will be, will be um, automatically configured because that's something, you know, it's pretty much crucial. And if you prefer like Angular, uh, Angular 2, then also TypeScript will be configured. And then when you say this, um, this is a preview command. Uh, Output um, that displays uh, the hello world example. I I'm going to just change this to um, mobile style because that's more important. Okay, here it is. Okay, so now this is uh, this is application running. So this is a view application uh, that I just created and. I'm going to open the source code from here. So, okay. So the view. So this is a uh, very unique to view, but um, there is an extension called VUE which defines uh, the view component. And of course, within the view component, we can use Onsen UI. And for instance, um, so say, and also this uh, supports hot reloading. So if we change something here, like hello, phone gap day, and when I hit save, it will be automatically reflected over here without changing anything. And it also applic applicable to um, like different pages. Like so, for instance, if I go to page two, and within this page two, uh, when I change this to also hello phone gap. Day. Page two. When I hit save, uh, it will be automatically reflected here without like doing any refresh. So it's a uh, it's just uh, like a hot reloading, and you don't need to refresh the browser anytime. Uh, what's the benefit of uh, Onsen UI? Um, you can so for now I'm I'm, uh, I'm displaying iPhone in iPhone interface, but when I change to like Galaxy Nexus, and when I refresh. Uh, this application totally changes to um, material design because of the auto styling. 
and the functionality looks, uh, the functionality is uh, totally similar, uh, totally equivalent, but all the animations and the, all the designs that composes the, uh, the, the mobile applications will be, will be optimized. So um, just for the example, um, I'm going to open the, maybe this snippet. I'm going, so this is, this is a pre, pre-prepared snippet which I'm, I'm going to use for demo, this demonstration. Uh, so this is a form, a uh, form demo which uses Onsen UI. So because I didn't describe so much about how the components work, I'm just taking this opportunity to describe a little bit more. So for Onsen UI, uh, we, you define a page using ons page. We are adding v hyphen because it's a view binding. Um, but if you use custom elements, you don't need this v dash. You just need ons page. Uh, and there's ons list, which is a list component. And there's a list header. Well, you will understand. You know, you know it's a self-explanatory. Uh, and you can also in, uh, combine with view uh, view styling and view view expressions like uh, this modifier uh, for for changing the Android. Um, and and yeah, pretty pretty much that's it. Uh, if you if you come to Onsen UI Kitchen Sink application, you can see that in Vue.js and the custom elements version. So so you will see uh, how it is composed, and the overall uh, result is looks like this. Um, so it looks like a pretty like a native Android. Um, there is one other example I created here. This is for dialogue. Okay, so this is this is a dialogue. Um, so these are like alerts, you know, prompt, toast, action sheet. So yeah, pretty much um, all the dialogue components we provide. Um, uh, for the component-wise, uh, for Onsen UI, um, if there is any you know request or feedback from the users, which you know they want to add the, as a component, we really want to you know add those components to make the developers' life easier. But for now, you know. Uh, we have pretty much like over like 30 components for creating mobile UIs. Okay. So back to the slide. So so this is a demo um, that we've been creating. So so um, so this is my last slide. So so again, um, I was started to talk about web components and how we did. Uh, actually, it was it was a very long story because maybe maybe not so many people are aware. But custom elements they have different versions. So previously, formally, there is custom elements v0, and now from maybe last year, Fran, do you remember? Maybe last year. Yeah, uh, there is a new specification called custom elements v1. So now all the all the Chrome Safari, they're, uh, they're using custom elements v1 for, uh, for, for custom elements. Uh, Onsen UI have also upgraded to v1. And, but still, you know, uh, other browsers like Firefox, it's, it's still like we need to flag it in order to use custom elements. Uh, but meanwhile, we are using polyfills to you know, overcome that issue. So, so again, um, um, if, you're, if you feel uh, you know, uh, curious about Onsen UI, um, we have a booth over there, so please like, hang out. And also, if you're interested in like, developing an application using Onsen UI or Monaka, and if you feel stuck or something, uh, please don't hesitate to call us. Uh, we are pretty much open, and we are gradually you know, um, inviting more people to, to our community. Uh, We've been doing in Japan uh, for a long time, but we haven't really you know, you know, added presence to the to the people here. But um, I think it's a very good opportunity now for for us to because we have um, many people like speaking English and dealing with uh, developers now. So I, I really appreciate it if you come by, um, dive into our community, you know, um, uh, grab some like maybe beers uh, remotely, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and have a chat about Onsen UI Monica. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you so much. Great talk, Masa. Any, any questions for Masa here? OK, we got one up there. Do I have my microphone helper still? Oh, we got one. There we go. Where was it?
Hi. Um, Hi. Where do you stand on um, uh, Windows universal support and support for um, progressive web apps with the answer in UI? Yes. Um, so uh, so the, maybe the simpler answer. Uh, Edge works, but IE not really works until IE 11. Uh, but if you add more polyfills, it will work. Uh, there, there should be many polyfills that required for IE to, to be compatible with native Chrome or Safari. Um, so we're, we're actually trying to create some documentation how to add polyfills for IE users. So please be patient about it. Yeah, we will deliver that pretty soon. We had, we had that discussion in the team. And as for the progressive web apps, yeah, um, also I totally uh, is capable of using with progressive web apps. There is nothing really, really differentiates uh, Cordoba and progressive web apps in terms of the mobile user interface. Uh, also, UI is solely for UI delivery, so yeah, all the native widgets looks almost the same as progressive web apps, so it's, it's totally compatible, so you can just use it right away. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, any other questions? Okay, that's it for now. Yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Joe, you want to come set up? Come set up.